Hey, what's up you guys? So for this, it's gonna be sort of like a revamp of a Maniac's manual. Uh, so the main thing that I really wanna cover with this, or the main thing that I do wanna go on from here, is that while I may not delve into matches too much, or may not be uploading too many sets or streams and all that kind of stuff, the main purpose for my channel, <laughs> and it's even like stated there and everything, the main reason um, for it and the content that I put out, it's really just to kind of close that gap between like casuals and top level players. Um, because I said it before, I said it numerous times, I like a challenge, I like having to work for my wins, um, but at the same exact time, that's what makes me very salty when it comes to characters like Starfire, because you can do everything right and the character can negate everything. Like it's not strictly just the player, it's not like you're losing to the player's tactics. Like a lot of people say it's like, well you can't just blame it on the character because you had to, you know, do A or Z or you had to input such and such, but it's like certain tools and certain characters, especially in NRS games, it's like it really doesn't matter how good or bad the player is. Like a character can be that strong that it doesn't matter how good of a player you are, you're still going to lose to them. Um, so, so that's what I mean. It's like I do enjoy like competitive matches. I do like matches where it's like you know it's player against player. Um, it's like even matchups and stuff like that. Um, but as I said before, it's like the only thing that really gets me salty. I really hate losing to bullshit. Like I really hate losing to like really OP characters or just losing to like safe mix that you know gets them all a whole bunch of mileage. Like against Flash. Like I hate playing against Flash because it just gets good. Um, and if you guess good, the most that you get is to counter poke him, and that's it. And if you guess wrong, you eat 60 to 70 percent, you know? Like, stuff like that, like, that's the only thing that really tilts me, but I do want to help the community, like, I guess, grow together, just because I don't agree that, you know, like, top players, while they may give other players matches, like, you know, like, you can ask, like, a top player, like, a tournament player, you know, like, you can ask them for games and uh, stuff like that, um, and it's, like, that's great and all, but, um, like, one of my friends, it's not really to call you out to put you on the spot, but, like, Clive, um, he was asking, you know, like, what helps leveling up, and it's, like, while you can watch tournament players, you can play against tournament players, you can watch your own footage, if you don't actually know what's going on, if you don't know what actually is good and what is bad play, then it's not really gonna make a difference as to what content you watch. You know, like it's just it, it just will not matter if you don't know what is right and what is wrong. Um, and then that whole spectrum itself of right and wrong or good and bad play, like it's very very wide and it's also very subjective. Um, so I'll delve into all that stuff afterwards, but that's mainly the backstory for all this. Um, so one of the big things or like the main key thing that I want to cover is frame data yet again. <laughs> It's like, I think it's like my third video covering frame data. Um, but that's just because it's really that crucial. Because I was thinking about other things, like other topics to cover, like fundies, footsies, neutral, all that stuff, and it will cover that. Um, but the thing is, it still all boils down to frame data. Like everything, always, the root of everything is frame data. So that's why I just want to start it off with this. If you guys don't understand it right off the bat, you may have to watch it a couple of times. If you still don't get it, you can still watch the other videos to come. Um, and then just go back to this, like, so that you can try to t tie the two together, you know, like, two plus two equals four, you know, like, see how the two relate to each other, basically. Or not, not necessarily two, because it's gonna be more than two videos, but, you know, you get what I mean. So this is essentially like a dummy's guide to frame data. Um, it's not to be condescending with it, calling it a dummy's guide. Um, just cause it is, it's very, very simple once you understand it. Um, but it is very, very complex when you actually delve into it, if that makes sense. Like the, like the theory of it and the understanding of it is fairly simple, but actually being able to apply it and to memorize it and to know how and where it does apply all over the match, that, that's a complexity, but that, you know, that takes time. So that's totally normal. But the main purpose of this video is just to explain the foundation of frame data, explain all the basic stuff out of it. Um, so that it helps, you know, improve that understanding. Um, so I've done this before, but it's like to start off, if you see where it says move data, frame data, um, like on the right hand side, where it says startup, that's how quick a move starts. In standard fighting games now, um, they run at 60 frames per second. And what that means, I'm pretty sure that you heard that many times, but all that that means is that within a second, 60 frames run by. Um, 
that's basically just the speed. That's just your, um, I guess your measurement of time or your measurement of frames. Like, um, I've used this example before, but it still applies. Like there's 60 seconds in a minute, and then there's 60 minutes within an hour. That's more or less how frame data works. It doesn't extend past anything past 60 frames per second, but that's how you should think of it. It's like within that increment, within that second, 60 frames run by. Um, so if you try to apply this knowledge, it's like eight frames um, within that second, you know, that's obviously very, very quick, and it is quick. Uh, so that's really what applies like to high level play. Like that's what makes for like really competitive um, scenarios or competitive play is when players are able to react to these really fast attacks or know what to do in these very, very small instances of time. Um, so that's mainly why frame data is so important. That's sort of like the backstory a bit. Uh, but to jump back now for startup, startup means that's how many frames it takes for the move to like come out and to make contact. So for this standing one, it takes eight frames, right? So that's what startup is. Now, when it comes to frame of impact, while the game doesn't explain frame of impact, it is something that's very, very, very much, um, applicable, <laughs> right? I think that's the word, uh, within the game and within any fighting game. So to show you an example, shield toss. You see how the startup is 11 frames? It means that it's 11 frames for it to come out and to, for it to make contact, right? That's the earliest, but frame of impact differs because frame of impact, while it is, it's not the same thing as startup, it can be the same. Like the frame for the frame of impact can be the same exact thing as startup, but the two terms are different because startup refers to how long it takes, like the earliest that the move come out and make contact. That's the startup. Frame of impact is when the move actually makes contact. So to sort of simplify that and to get a better understanding. This move is 11 frame startup, right? Shield toss is 11 frame startup, yes. But at this range, and this usually applies to ranged attacks and projectiles, but at this range, the frame of impact is no longer going to be 11 frames because it has to travel all this distance. So it's like, yes, the startup is 11 and the frame of impact can be 11 when it's all the way over here. But if you create some distance, the startup still stays the same. The startup is still 11 frames, but now the frame of impact changes because of the distance that it has to travel. So that's how the two, you know, like relate to one another and how they apply. <clears throat> And the way that you apply that in like um, in matches or like when it comes to punishes, same with like her shield bash. Um, just to kind of extend this a little bit, shield bash is eight frame startup, right? The frame of impact at this range is eight frames, but when it extends over here, the frame of impact is no longer eight frames. It takes longer because it, she has to travel all this distance. So let's say something is like negative twelve over here and I do a shield bash to punish it, it it's going to punish it. I'll explain punishing and negative frames and all that stuff right after. But if something is negative 12 and I use her bash, because it's 8 frames and those 8 fall within that 12, she can punish her. But now she's all the way over here, even though she has an 8 frame move and she's still negative 12 for whatever it is that she did, because I'm traveling, there's a very likely chance that I will not be able to punish it now because she's traveling. So the frame of impact is not going to be 8 frames anymore for this specific move. So that's how the two, again, that's how the two relate to each other, how they apply. When it comes to active frames, active frames really just means when that move is out, for that duration, whatever that frame amount is, if it makes contact with the opponent, it can still hit them. So, for example, I have to be Starfire for this. Her active frames, like if she does something like this, it's, I don't know the exact number, but it's very, very, very long. It's basically like indefinitely active. When it comes to projectiles, they're more or less indefinitely active. Um, right, as a Star Blast, you see how it says NA active frames? That's usually why, why it says that. Um, because basically once this move is out, the entire time that it's out, it's active, so if it makes contact at any given point, it's still going to hit her because it's active that entire time that it's moving. Um, so that's what active frames refers to. Or like with Wonder Woman, uh, I'm trying to think, okay. Her shield toss has a bit of active frames. I can have her jump back so you can see. 
I want to have her try to land on the shield. I don't know if I can even get it. I don't think I can, damn it. Okay, basically, you see when this shield stops for a little bit, it does like that tiny bit of a pause before it comes back. It's still active during that time, like just for a couple of frames. So if somebody's just jumping back or they're trying to backdash and they land right into that mini hover, because it's still active during that time, then they'll get hit. But on the way back, the shield isn't active anymore. Um, but that's just like two different examples of two different kinds of properties, like between a shield and a star bolt. But basically active frames, again, it's just for ho however many frames that it's active, it's because while that move is out, for that many frames, if it makes contact, it will still register like a hit. Or if it makes contact on block, it'll just be blocked. Um, but that's all that it really refers to. And everything varies. There's no real one um, formula or anything like that. Like no one key thing to jump back to when it comes to active frames. It's more so something that you just have to test or just like check within the game and see what the active frames are. Uh, and then when it comes to recovery. Recovery basically means that for whatever amount of recovery frames that the character has, for that much time, they cannot move. So if a character has 30 frames of recovery, that means that once the active frames are done, for that many frames, for those 30 additional frames following after, the character cannot move, they can't do nothing. Um, so recovery frames, in a nutshell, is basically the period of time where your character cannot do anything. It doesn't matter if the recovery frames is 1, if it's 5, if it's 20, if it's like 100, it doesn't really matter what the recovery frames are. For, for that many frames, the character cannot move, they cannot do anything. They can't block, they can't backdash, they can, they can do nothing whatsoever. Um, so if you can sort of get a bit of an understanding as to why that's bad, it's like, yeah, you know, not moving, not being able to block, obviously that's bad, right? So that should sort of, sort of click in your head, like, I'm not trying to be condescending again, um, but it's like, it should click in your head that the smaller the number of recovery frames, the better. Because the smaller the number of frames, that means the shorter amount of time that your character cannot move. Obviously you want your character to be able to move. You want to be able to move whenever you want, right? Um, so if something does miss, the lower the recovery, the better for you because that means the shorter amount of time. Like if you only have 5 frames of recovery, that's only a very very tiny bit of time that you cannot move. So it's like while you are still in recovery, yes, you're not in recovery for that many frames. So the smaller the number of recovery for those recovery frames, the better for you. The higher the number of recovery frames, um, the worse that it is. Just because it's that much more time, you know? And again, kind of reiterating it, but it's like because you cannot move while you're in recovery, the opponent can't hit you while you're in recovery. So that's why you don't want to throw things out and have them miss all the time. Or that's why if you do int make something intentionally whiff, whiffing just means missing. You know, like not hitting the opponent, not hitting anything. Um, so if you do make something whiff, so that you do put yourself in those recovery frames, you want to do it so that it's not that much, that you're not going to get punished for it, that you're not going to get blown up. Um, so those are just, just the things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to recovery frames and whiffing. And it, on the flip side, it's the same thing with the opponent. Like if the opponent does something that doesn't have that much recovery, then they're going to be able to move almost instantly, you know? Like, it won't be exactly instant, but it feels very much instant. Just because it's such a short amount of time. But if they do have a lot of recovery frames, then you're able to punish them. Um, just to show an example really quick. Like, if Starfire does this, like a far Stardust, right? Oh, you know what? I actually had to be myself and just record her. See, look, I'm holding up, right? So while she does an entire move, you see how long it takes for her to move again? She's in recovery during all this time. So basically, if I make the right read, I can I can actually punish her in this whole process, as you can see. You see how on the top left it says punish? You see how it says punish? Or even just checking them with like a little move like that. See like right there, I was too slow. But that's more or less what recovery applies to. It's just, it's that moment of time where the character can't do anything. So now when it comes to plus frames, negative frames, and being neutral. Uh, 
I will cover cancel advantage. I doubt that I'll cover it in this specific video. I may just do a part two and cover it there just because it's complex, uh, but I will be covering that. But going back, when it comes to plus frames, negative frames, and neutral, what neutral means is that's a period or that's the time uh, when you and the opponent can move at the same exact time. Uh, it basically means that nothing is stopping either of you from moving at the same exact moment. So like if no one's throwing out any attacks and you're both just shimmying, like you're both just going back and forth, you're both neutral right now. No one, it, no one has an advantage. Um, advantage in the sense of frames. I'm not talking about matchups and tools and all that stuff. I'm just specifically talking about frames right now. Uh, so neutral just means that neither one of you have an advantage. No one is plus, no one is negative. You're both neutral. Neutral is neutral. You know? And neutral can apply anywhere. It can be starting match point. You're both neutral. You can be at a distance. No one's throwing anything out. You're both neutral. You can do something on block. And it's neutral. It's still neutral. You both get to move at the same exact time right after. Let's say you do something on hit, that's neutral. Again, you're both neutral, so you get to move at the same exact time. Same exact time. So it's really, it's just any instance that you both are free to move at the same exact moment. That's all that neutral really applies to. And that's why I'm listing all these examples because it's subjective. It can apply literally anywhere. All that it is, it's just that you and the opponent, neither one of you have an advantage over the other. You both get to move at the same time. And that's all that neutral is. Um, neutral on block or on hit, like neutral in terms of frame data, not neutral, the term of playing neutral. <laughs> just to just to clarify that. So now when it comes to plus frames, plus frames and negative frames. Um, they're somewhat relative, but at the same time they're not. Um, so to explain that bit, if you're plus on block, like let's say I do this, this isn't at the right frame data, but for example purposes, let's say I'm plus five off of this, you can sort of think of it that the opponent is negative five, but the best way to think about it to not confuse yourself is just that they're frozen for five frames. So it's like they can still block, um, like that's really their only option. Their only option is to block for that period of time. Um, but that's it. But that's the only way that you should really think about it. Like let's say I do this and I'm plus 20. It means that for 20 frames, I'm getting a head start. For 20 frames, I get to move before the opponent can and the opponent is just stuck for that many frames. They're not negative, Not technically they're not negative, um, or maybe they are, but the thing is don't try to think of it that way, just because it's gonna confuse you for my examples when I cover negative frames. So just think about it in the sense of whatever the plus frames are, whether it's plus one, plus five, plus 20, plus 100, you are able to move before the opponent can for that many frames, and the opponent is stuck, they're frozen for that many frames. So that's the only way that you should think about it and that's the only way that you should see it to get a solid understanding of it. Whether it's on hit or on block, it does not matter. Um, that That's basically how it works. It's just whatever the plus frame amount is, again, it can be anything from plus one, plus two, plus six, doesn't matter. You're able to move for that many frames before the opponent can and the opponent is stuck. They're frozen in time for that many frames. That's all that it applies to when it comes to plus frames. When it comes to negative frames, when a move is actually negative, either on hit or on block, what that means is you are now technically stuck. However, you can be punished for those negative frames. Um, so to explain that bit, negative frames is sort of the opposite of plus frames um, in a sense of, let's say I do this and I'm negative 16. In a sense, the opponent is now plus 16. This is where you can apply the flip side of it. Um, so it's like, let's say I do this right up close. I'm negative 16 and the opponent is on plus 16. So you can think of it that way or you can think of it as, you know, like you're negative 16. So you're frozen in time for 16 frames while the opponent is able to move freely before you can for those 16 frames. Um, so it is somewhat similar, but the difference is when it comes to negative frames, there is that window that you can be punished. So what punishing refers to is being able to use a move that will make contact on whoever is negative within that period of time that they're negative. <laughs> I know that that doesn't really make sense, but to explain that a little bit better. Let's say I do this, right, and I am negative 16. During those 16 frames that the opponent is able to move, 
they are free to punish me because I cannot do anything. You know how when I was plus 20, right? For example purposes, when I was plus 20 doing this, the opponent, it, they're just frozen in time for 20 frames, but they're still able to block, right? When I do this and I put myself into negative frames, I actually can't do anything during those negative frames. I cannot block. It's very much similar to recovery. You're stuck, basically, for that period of time. Like, you're stuck for, for whatever that frame amount is, you're stuck there. You cannot do anything. You can't backdash, can't super, can't armor, can't block. You cannot do nothing for that time. So, if I'm negative 16 for doing this, right? That means that for those 16 frames, the opponent can punish me. If they do something that is 16 frames, that falls within a 16, they can punish me. If they do something that's 10 frames, it can punish me. If they do something that's 2 frames, it can punish me. The difference is, if they do something that is 17 frames now, now it can no longer punish because it does not fall within that 16 frame window. Um, so that's basically what I was trying to explain before. Whatever those negative frames are, if the opponent is able to make contact within those frames, within that negative window, it's going to be a punish. If they cannot, then it makes the move safe. Um, and that's what cuts into like safety and punishing, right? So like this move, for example, on block, this is negative 8, right? But nothing that she does at that range is going to make contact in 8 frames. So this is what will make this move safe at this distance. If I do it up close, it's still negative 8. But now I'm, I'm right next to her so she can still punish me. Um, so the way that you can sort of think about it is that, again, this is also subjective. Um, but when it comes to safety and punishing, it's really just depending on the opponent, depending on the character that you're going up against. Because, like, let's say, just for example purposes, let's say I do this and I'm negative 6, right? Let's say I do this and I'm negative 6 on block. If the opponent has a 6 frame poke, they can punish me for it. But now, if the opponent's fastest move is 7 frames, this is what makes it safe now. Because yes, I'm still negative 6. Yes, in other situations I can get punished. But because the opposing character right now doesn't have a move that is fast enough to punish me in this specific situation, it, it now makes it safe. So that's what I mean by things are subjective like that. Um, but that's how punishing and safety work. That's how negative frames work overall. Um, so I guess to sort of go back into plus frames a bit, uh, to sort of tie into that, like the flip side of punishing. If I do this, right, and I'm plus 20, right, let's say that sh she's frozen in time, right, for those 20 frames. If I do something that's 8 frames, again, she can't do anything because the, the 8 falls within that 20. Like, when I'm, when I'm plus 20, in this specific example, for those 20 frames, if I do anything that falls within that 20 frame window, it is considered a jail. It is considered jailing. Because they literally cannot do anything during those plus frames. Like, if I'm plus 20 and I do something that's 8 frames, it's a jail. She literally has no option. She can't do anything. Obviously, you have push block, but it's like, aside from that, she can't do nothing. If I'm plus 20 and I do something that's 19 frames, it still falls within that 20. So it's still jailing. Um, so that's more or less how jailing works in a nutshell. Um, so now the difference between jailing and frame traps. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit complex, but try to stay with me. Frame trapping works in a similar fashion where you're using your plus frames to your advantage. Um, but there is a window where the opponent can do stuff. But it's usually situations where it's like while they do have a window, they're kind of still forced to hold things. So to listen example, let's say I do this, right? I do this jab and I am plus two, right? Just for example purposes, I do this and I'm plus two, I'll block. If I do my down one, right? I'm plus two and I do my down one, which is six frames. You just take the difference. The two take away the six. The opponent, while they can move, they only have a four frame window to try to do anything about this. So while it's not jailing, because no move is faster than six frames in the game, they, in terms of attacks, they can't do anything about this, right? Like let's say I'm plus two and I'm going into this, they only have a four frame window to do anything. Um, so they can, they can choose to either try to jump, they can try to backdash, they can try to armor. 
Um, so there is that window. I did give them a four frame opening to do something. But if they're trying to contest attacks, they're not going to win because no move is faster than six frames. Um, so that's more or less how frame trapping works. Frame trapping is a situation where you do something on hit or on block and your follow up will counter whatever your opponent's attacks are going to be. So it's like you are giving them an opportunity to attack back, you are giving them an opportunity to move again, but if they try to contest hits with you, if they're trying to trade hits, it's not going to work. Because you have the frame advantage, and that's what a frame trap is. Um, and the reason why I'm explaining that, and I'm not really m mentioning plus frames necessarily, is that, let's say I did this, and it was neutral on block. You remember how I mentioned with neutral, it means that you and the opponent move at the same exact time, right? No one has advantage. You're both moving at the same time. That's what neutral is, right? However, if you do this and you're neutral and you go into a six frame down one, if Starfire's fastest move was seven frames, this is now considered a frame trap. Because while you're technically not plus, you can sort of think of it that you are because you're both neutral. You both move at the same exact time. But, but if you're both going for your fastest moves now, Wonder Woman, her fastest move is 6 frames. Theoretically, just for example purposes, let's say Starfire's fastest move was 6 frames. It does not matter that you're both moving at the same exact time, or actually it does. You're both moving at the same exact time, but 6 is faster than 7. So you will always beat her out in this specific situation. So that's how a frame trap works in the neutral also. You don't necessarily have to be plus to, to frame trap. It's really just a situation where your follow-up of whatever it is that you just did on block or on hit is going to counter your opponent's attacks, like if they're trying to attack you right back. Um, and that's more or less how frame trapping works. Like, there's no real way to specifically describe it aside from that because, again, it's subjective. Like, you can... I can be, like, negative one, let's say, from doing this, right? And the opponent's fastest move is nine frames. Because this is six frames, I have to add the difference, right? I'm negative one, and this is six frames, I have to add that one, right? So this is technically going to come out on frame seven, post block. Even though I'm still negative, and Starfire's fastest move, let's say, is nine frames, she's not going to be able to do anything to me. This is still going to be a frame trap. Again, this is one of those situations that doesn't really happen, but it's sort of a way to sort of, I guess, extend the understanding. So yeah, that's basically all the basics for frame data. That's like active frames, startup, you know, plus, block, neutral, all that stuff. Um, those, are the real, those are the key things that you really want to get down, that you really want to understand. Just because those things, like those factors, like being negative, being plus, being in recovery, that literally applies anywhere and everywhere. Like I can be plus from doing this from all the way over here, you know? I can be plus from doing something over here. I can be in recovery from doing something like all the way over here, as you can see, and like I missed, you know? So it's like, I don't necessarily have to be next to the opponent, your opponent doesn't have to be next to you, or they can be. All these things, they're subjective as to what's going on in the match. So you just want to get your general understanding first as to how this all applies to everything. Um, so I'm actually going to just do a part two covering cancel advantage, just because it's a little bit more complex. Um, and yeah, if the, f if the plus and block frames were like a little too confusing, you guys more than welcome to feel like, feel free to leave your comments, um, leave comments in general, whether this is even useful or not, um, or whether it wasn't, um, but yeah, it's like, I'm going to go into the cancel advantage video. And then when I cover the following stuff afterwards, like neutral and fundies and all that stuff, if there are a few things that I need to clarify then I'll just clarify them really briefly at the very start, but then I'll go into like the main topics that I want to cover. Uh, so that's that. So I hope this was of use, and take care.